In this video, we're going to learn how to do a glitch title effect like this one. When you see glitch title, it could look very overwhelming because, oh my gosh, where do I even start? And that is why I'm making this video. By no means is this the only way to do it. There's tons of ways to do this, but I just want to show you the basics. I just want to show you which effects you could be using and which techniques you could be using to create your own glitch effects. With all that being said, it is time for step number one. And step number one is not in Premiere Pro, which may be surprising, but it is actually crucial. It is crucial to have some good sound design. It doesn't need to be super complicated, but just a few sound effects will make all of the difference because here's a title without sound effects and here's a title with sound design I mean the difference is huge sound design is so important even for little things like this if you want to use the exact same sound effects that I'm using in this example I'll put a link in the description to a service that I use for all of my sound effects it's a service called epidemic sound and with this link you'll get 30 days for free no strings attached this video is not sponsored by them they don't even know that I'm making this video but I honestly just use their service for every single video for the last two years so if you've ever wondered where I got a song from or a sound effect from it's from them. Obviously, you can use sound effects from anywhere else, but if you want to use the same ones that I'm using in this example, then you can find them through the link. After a quick search on Epidemic, I decided to go for Electrical Glitch 1, Electrical Glitch 2, and PE Glitch 1. So now let's hop into our editing program and start creating this glitch effects. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously put the sound effects on the timeline and then just move it around until we like how it sounds. You can make it as complex or as simple as you want. There's no right or wrong when it comes to this stuff. Once we're happy with how it sounds, it is time to set the markers. And this is key because we want to time the glitch and we want to align it with the sound effects. So make the audio tracks a little bit bigger because you can already see in the waveform where you can set the markers. So I'm just going to scrub through it. I'm going to set some markers by pressing M on my keyboard. And then once we're done, it's time to create a text layer. Now the easiest way to create a text layer is by pressing T on your keyboard. And then we can start typing our text on the screen. If you want, you can open up the essential graphics panel to stylize the text over there and align it over there. But for simplicity reasons, we're just going to stick to effect controls. Let's double click on our text to select all of it and then change our font, change the sizing, do whatever you like with it. Once you're happy with how your text looks, it's time for effect number one, and that is the wave warp effect. So let's go to effects right here. And if you don't see this tab, then go to window and then click on effects. And let's type in wave warp. We're going to drag this to our text layer and then right here in the effect controls, you can see that it popped up right here. My recommendations for this is to either set it to square or to noise or both by adding another wave warp effect. Totally depends on your personal preference. We're going to start with square and then later we will add noise. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the direction to 180 degrees because we want the lines to be horizontal instead of vertical. And then the only three settings that we're going to be touching is the wave height, the wave width and the phase. The wave width is how fat you want your lines to be. And I like them to be very thin. So I'm going to set it to about five and we're going to be keyframing the wave height. And the wave height is basically how much you want to separate the lines. So in order to keyframe it, we're going to click on the little stopwatch in front of wave height. And as you can see, a little diamond has appeared right here which is a keyframe so we're going to set this to four and then we're going to move a frame or a few frames forward all depends on personal preference we're going to change the value move forward again change the value again and then just repeat this a few times don't worry we do not need to do this for the entire text layer once we've done this a couple of times we can easily just copy and paste the keyframes which saves a lot of time so just hit ctrl c or command c if you're on a mac and then to paste it hit ctrl v or command v the last setting that we're going to change is is face and we're going to create keyframes for this one as well so let's click on the little stopwatch and we're just going to create a keyframe at the beginning and the end of the text layer now when it comes to this value there's not really a science behind it i just randomly chose a number so don't ask me why i did what i did it looks good so let's continue now let's add another wave warp effect and this time we're going to choose the wave type noise and again, for this one, we want to change the direction to 180 degrees. We want to change the wave height to about five and the wave width to about 10. For now, we're just going to leave this as it is. We're not going to keyframe it just yet. We'll do that a little bit later in the video and I'll explain why when we're there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the text layer two times. So we have three layers in total. In order to do this, we're going to select our text layer. We're going to press and hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. And then we're going to drag the text layer up. And the reason why 
why we're doing this is because we want to add some color. So we're going to go back to effects and this time we're going to type in channel mixer. We want to apply the channel mixer effect to all three layers. So select all of the three layers like this. With all of those layers selected, then click and drag channel mixer. And as you can see, it will now be applied to all three layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to dedicate one of the three colors, red, green, or blue to these layers. So the bottom layer, which is on V1, will be red. Change green, green, and blue, blue to zero. Then we're going to click on the layer above that on V2, and we're going to change this one to green. So in order to do that, we have to change red, red, and blue, blue to zero. And lastly, we go to the top layer on V3 and change red, red, and green, green, to zero. Now this is definitely not what we're going for. So what we need to do is we need to go back to effect controls, go to opacity and then change the blend mode to screen. And after we've done that, we can see that everything has changed back to white. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to click on either of the two top layers and reposition it a little bit. And then we do the same thing for the top text layer on V3. The colors will differ depending on how much you change the position. So keep that in mind. And now it is time to have some fun. Now we're going to actually create that glitch and we're going to do that by using the markers that we set at the beginning of the video. Before we do anything else though, I want to preface this by saying that this is just one of many ways how you can create this glitch effect. I highly recommend to take the steps and techniques as an inspiration for your own. If you're using the same sound effects as me, you can totally follow along, but if not, you'll have to apply the information to your own edits. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move the second and the third text layer because we want the distortion to be gradually introduced and not right in the front. So I'm just going to move it back. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to create that little intro where the text appears on screen. And in order to do this, we're going to zoom in on the timeline by pressing the plus key on our keyboard a million times. And then we're going to skip two frames forward by pressing the right arrow key on our keyboard. Then in order to enable the cut tool, we need to press C on our keyboard and then click right here where the playhead is at. Now let's repeat this by moving another two frames forward and then cutting it again. And we're going to do this two more times. Now we will go back to the first piece that we just cut and we're going to scale it up to about 600% and reposition it. Now let's move to the second piece and this one we're going to be scaling up to about 330% and again we're going to reposition it to scatter it around on the screen. Now this looks pretty good but I also want to create the flickering effect and this is super easy because all we have to do is cut up the third piece and then deleting a frame right here. Now like I just said we want to introduce a distortion more gradually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the noise wave warp effect from the first few pieces here and you might be wondering why we're deleting the effects because we just added them and I totally get that question. I've been going back and forth on how to show you this title effect the best way I can and I feel like this is just going to be a little bit more clearer because we're going to be chopping up this entire layer so having to add the effects later might get really messy and it might be really hard to follow. So therefore I thought it would be easier to just delete the effects and change them a little as we go. All right, so we've deleted the noise wave warp effect. And as you can see now, there is a glitch sound effect starting right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the clip again and then cut out a few frames. All right, I think that this is a good start. So let's move on to the third marker right here. So what we need to do here is first, we need to move layer two and three to this marker. And then we're going to listen to the sound effect and we're going to create keyframes to distort the title. This is going to take a few seconds. So take your time to really time the glitch well. Instead of making the entire title flicker, what I want to do here is I want to make the colors flicker. So that is why I'm going to cut the second and the third layer right here and delete those frames. And then right here at the fourth marker, we're going to make the text disappear completely again. So we're going to have to delete another frame. Again, we'll have to repeat these steps a few more times. And finally, we'll end up with something like this. If you want to learn another really cool title effect, like how to reveal text behind a person or an object, I really recommend you to check out this video right here. And of course, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so you won't miss out on new videos.